Hello friends, for today's show and tell is Sanyo Digital Clock Radio from the 1970s. This is my main clock and also alarm clock I use. It's very reliable, as long as the electricity doesn't go out. It keeps perfect time and I've been using it for two years now, I think. I bought it completely non-functional, it was in terrible shape and I managed to bring it back into working condition. So I will show you what can it do, what it can do, some functions and uh, there will be a second part you can watch if you wish. Uh, reception of the radio as you can see it has four <coughs> four wave bands so there is uh, quite a lot of things you can listen to in the evening on the front panel obviously there is the flip clock and the controls for the flip clock this button down here or the dial or knob this is for setting the alarm time you can see it here in the little window it only goes in one direction alarm set you can see it's the inside now if I if I come to half past 10 as it is now you will hear the radio will turn on because I have the alarm there it goes Or you can also use the alarm, the inbuilt buzzer, to wake you up, but it's very annoying, so I don't use that. Here you can see it's on radio and buzzer. And let's hear how that sounds. Not very pleasant. So back to the front. So that sets the alarm. The alarm goes off after about an hour and some 13 minutes. So we'll switch it off here. Right, it goes only in one direction, you cannot go backwards. That's how the mechanism is built. And this knob here, the large one, sets the time. Also goes in, in one direction only. And of course, you can see this is a 24 hour <coughs> flip clock. This button here, this knob, it sets, you can, you can leave the clock, you can leave the radio on to sleep, right? So you can turn this, it turns the radio on and you can set it for up to three hours and as time goes by, as the minutes progress, this knob will rotate back and it will switch the radio off. Let's see how that goes. I will force the clock to go forward. And there we have it. I also use this knob because it, it, you can uh, turn the radio on with it just like that when I'm setting the volume for my alarm so I will so I will set the alarm here and then I will just check my volume here so that I, I don't want to mess with the function selector because then I will leave it ex accidentally on off or on the buzzer and well, actually on off, and that happened to me once that I thought that I had the alarm on and it was off. So I always leave this on radio, that means the radio will wake you up. And I check the volume with the sleep button. So that's on the front. <clears throat> on the top, we have three buttons, three knobs. There is function selector switch.
So manual means you turn the radio on. So it's just the radio. Off is off. Radio, that means uh, the alarm clock will turn the radio on. And also the buzzer, as we have heard. Uh, band is band, nothing, nothing else there. I just select band. This is the <coughs> um, selector and volume. This is your snooze button. It says auto repeat. You press this in and the button will pop out after I think five minutes. You can also have a look at that. So, yeah. Let's say 20. So that's your snooze button. You can press that and you will have five, six minutes until you turn the clock, turn the, the, the radio, the alarm off manually. On this side, this is this, it's magic, and an earphone jack, socket connector plug. Nah. side here is the antenna socket interesting it uses I think this is a, a two millimeter banana plug Th this is something I made from a wire and a banana plug at the other end to improve my reception a little bit. And also very easy. Oops. Model number. Zenio. This is European model, you can see here, 220, 50 hertz, 5 watts. And here is the antenna provided with the radio, it's just a length of wire, just like that. And also we can have a look at the bottom of the set. Obviously I did ignore that because I wanted to make this functional again. Luckily, or amazingly intact still, the sticker considering the shape this was in. And this was the clock, was the radio clock was really dirty, very, very unclean. It was filthy. I had to take the top off and bottom off and soak that in, in soap water. And I, I had to take a, how do you call them? these cotton sticks, q-tips, and I had to clean each and every one of these little holes here, because the speaker sits here and also there are little holes and circles, and of course you can imagine how well is that place, uh, how well dirt sticks in there. 
And also there, there is the cases, uh, the plastic is yellowed, but I, I'm, I'm not bothered uh, by that. There are some marks here that I managed to, to get off with uh, the magic eraser. So actually, it, it looks nice considering the shape it was in. Also this silver thing here on the front panel, uh, there was silver paint and parts of that were missing so I bought a silver marker and I redid this whole thing and also this frame on the clock. There's a crack here. And also crack here. I suspect it was dropped on on, on the fa fa face down because when I got it the knobs were bent and I had to bend them back into position so that I could rotate the knobs actually. Uh, the clock was, was not working. I had to fix that. I, I had a gear made, I took the clock apart, but you will see that from the inside. I'll tell you how I fixed the clock. So this was the major thing and I managed to make it functional again, so I was very happy. You have to be careful uh, while taking this apart because there is a wire that connects the external antenna jack to the main board. You can see that just here at the back and you can disconnect that by pulling well, I pull the sleeve off it. There we go. And the speaker remains connected here. So now we have the top off. Leave it on the side. You can have a look inside. Here is a flip clock itself. Oh, and I also have to replace the, the neon lamp. You have to be careful when replacing those. Do not forget the resistor that has to go with the lamp. Otherwise you will burn the lamp. Uh -huh. There was still some 
the electricity, the capacitor is here. I made a sound, but it's not plugged in. So there is the, the, the knob here. It's connected to the mechanisms down there. Gears and clockworks and stuffs. There we have the motor. And here is a switch, which is activated. Sorry. Through that. Circuit board for the radio. Right antenna, lovely. Coils, capacitors, transistor, transistors there, diodes, resistors. Maybe I will change some of these, but the radio works. The only thing, uh, that, um, I tried headphones with the, with the jack. Oh, here it is, yes. The headphone jack, and there was quite a loud hum, so I don't know if that is due to some of those capacitors. It's not, uh, it's not audible through the inbuilt speaker. Maybe it doesn't go down to that frequency. This is the motor. And I will turn the clock on for you to see how the motor works in just a moment. You can see some interesting things going on here. You can see this zip tie here. That is because when I was taking the motor apart, I thought that uh, these lugs, you see there is the, this, this lug here, this post, it's silver, and I thought these were screwed in because they looked like screws from the top, so I tried to unscrew them, but then I gave up and I just took a, believe it or not, I took a metal saw to this and I just saw the thing off. That was posts, all three of them. So I couldn't salvage them, I couldn't reuse them, and I replaced the gear. This, this, uh, the black one, this gear is the gear that has been replaced. It's not perfect, it's a bit loose, it's a bit wobbly, but it fits, it has the correct amount of teeth, and the clock keeps a good time. Is the original. gear that was damaged and had to be replaced. The black mark you see is from when I tried to count the teeth but in the end I took a picture and did it in, in the computer marking off the teeth. It was way easier that way you can see it's completely destroyed. I'm not sure what happened to this. It, to me it appears like some sort of exposure to chemical, some sort of uh, corrosive liquid has been spilled over this gear, but maybe it's just the plastic that deteriorated over the time period that this sat somewhere, maybe in the sun. So you can see the teeth are gone. And actually, it shrunk in size, it shrunk, and the internal. Uh, the whole size increased, which is interesting. So this this is why I had to take the motor, the transmission apart, to replace this damaged gear. And I had the gear made. And actually, I had I ordered two just to make sure, which turned out to be a wise decision, because the guy who made them, these are not. Um, 
it works, but it's not precision made. It's not done on a machine that's been guided by a computer, you can see that. I'm not sure how he did these. What did he use? Important thing is that it, they work. Uh, this one also works, but the other one was actually slightly better. I think there was a um, something with the hole that didn't fit. The, the other one fit better. This is the second one I had made. So you can see he, he managed to cut. The teeth are not the same module as what is in the flip clock, but they engage successfully and the teeth count is correct. So the clock works as it should. Right, and the tricky part is here, because you have the outer gear and then you have the inside, the smaller gear here. You can see here he glued these together. So these are the lugs I cut from the motor. See the pieces? It wasn't a big deal because it's made of aluminum or aluminium, whichever you prefer. This is the original lamp I got with a 150K. That is 150,000 ohms, which was there originally. The resistor is fine, but the lamp... Actually, the lamp worked when I got the clock. I could see the light inside. It was very weak, but it worked. And when I tried to clean the lamp, it fell apart. It just, you know, the leads disintegrated in my hands. These are the original parts from the clock. So I couldn't reuse those posts, so I improvised. This silver part over here is actually a piece of uh, a ballpoint refill. This is the tube that has the ink inside. And I took, I found out that this is the perfect size to fit uh, the zip ties that I had. So I cut uh, three pieces of, of ballpoint pen, ink refill, to length. And then I connected the motor, the transmission to the motor, with these zip ties. And that's how I improvised to put this, put this motor back together. So here's the clock running.